In this video, we're going to use Tailwind CSS to build this landing page, which is a personal portfolio project. This is an iCodes Pro challenge, which I already completed, and I'm going to show you how to build it. As you can see, we have a nav section, then a section which talks more about us and what we do. And then we have a gallery of the projects we built. And at the end, we talk more about what services we provide, as well as let users know where they can find us. And of course, the project is also responsive, so it looks good on mobile devices as well. I'm going to show you how to buy a domain name and host it on your own website. So you can showcase it to your clients, your future employer, or your mom, whatever you like. In order to host our website and to get the domain name for free, we're going to use Hostinger. Right now, they're running a Black Friday sale, so you can get the best prices they can offer. If we scroll down, you can see that you can save up to 81% and you get over 100 websites, 100 gigabytes of storage, free SSL certificate, free emails, even a free domain name, which is worth $10. So you can add this to the cart. Here you can choose your period. I suggest 48 months because it will save you the most money. And after you enter your details, if there isn't a coupon code, you can use coupon code Florine Pop apply it and you get an even bigger discount thanks to our partnership. Next, fill in your details and submit the payment. Once you log in into your account, as you can see here, you can claim the domain name. Here you can type whatever domain name you want. Let's say if Florine Tutorials is available, .com, of course, because it looks more professional. All right, it's available. And as you can see, we get it for free because of our hosting plan. Let's claim it. And once you add in the domain name details, you should have a green check here, which means that you have the domain name. Next, let's set up the hosting. Click start now. Let's say we don't want a personalized experience. We can build it for ourselves, and we're going to create an empty website. We can select the domain name and finish the setup. Once everything is done, we can manage our website. And as you can see, everything is set up now. All we have to do is add the code our website. At the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to use the file manager to add it on the website and have it go live on your domain name. All right, so we're going to start from scratch. As you can see here, we have a blank. I call this project, which only has the script CDN for Tailwind CSS, which means that we have access to all the Tailwind CSS classes. Okay, so first thing first, we're going to build the nav, which is going to have the image our name and the navigation with the items. So let's build the nav with the image, a paragraph which will hold our name, and then the UL, which will have three list items, and each of them let's add a link like that. First link is going to be about, next one is going to be work, and the last one, solutions. Let me add the image in the source here. And also for all, let's write pop and close the tag like this. So we basically have the HTML structure for the nav. Now let's style it with Tailwind CSS. First, we would like to center everything and give it a certain width. For that, in Tailwind, we have a class of container which will, hmm, apparently it doesn't do anything, but it does. Let me show you by adding a class of BG Purple 600. So we see the background color. And by removing the container, you'll see that this nav is spanning across the entire width, but we don't want that. We want to have a certain size, and then we want to center this container. And we can do that with the class Amex Auto which will set the margin left and margin right to auto. Basically, it will push the content. All right, we can get rid of the background color, but also maybe first let's add some vertical margin as well, 12 in this case, which is 48 pixels or three RAM. You can learn more about the sizings by going to tellingcss.com. All right, next we're going to remove the background color, Next, let's convert this into a flex container, 
So that will have the image, the paragraph, and also the list arranged horizontally. And adding the class items center, we're going to also center them vertically. And last but not least, let's add some spacing around the elements so they don't touch. All right, look at that, looking better and better. For the image, let's set the fix width of 40 and height of 40. And we can set rounded pole so that it turns into a circle. Perfect, the image is done, the paragraph is done. The last thing to style will be the UL. Here, we're going to give it a class of flex as well. Let's give it a border and have it rounded full as well. That way, it will be rounded in the corners. And now we'll style the allies to give it a bit of padding to make them look nicer. Padding X of 6 and padding Y of or, and they will occupy more space now in the UL. And for the first one, let's give it also a border and rounded pole. So we'll basically have a, a pill inside a bigger pill. And in order to push the UL to the right, we're going to add margin left auto. Remember how we centered the container here? Well, with margin left only, we're going to push the UL to the right. Okay, that's awesome. The only issue now is that it's not responsive. So let's fix that as well. Keep in mind that in Tailwind, the default is mobile first design. So all the classes we apply will be applied from mobile up. So in case we want to design something differently on desktop, we're going to need to use the pseudo classes. So let's see this in action. Basically on mobile, instead of having flex and flex row, which is the default, we want them to be flex column. This way the image, the paragraph and the UL will be on top of each other. And only on bigger screens from M day up, we want it to be flex row. And now if we zoom out, it will align horizontally. And if we zoom in, it will align vertically. The only issue is with the nav here because we added this ML auto class. But we can fix this by adding the ML auto only on MD or bigger screen sizes. So look at that. On mobile now, it looks way better. And also it looks good on desktop. Perfect. We have the nav done. Now let's do the next section, which will be the header. We're going to use the header HTML tag because we want to keep everything semantic. And inside the header, we're going to have an H2, which will be text there in the middle. Let me copy it. And underneath, we'll have an H4, which will have a description. All right, we can format it. So everything looks there now. Perfect. As you can see, the header also stands on the left edge of the website. It's because we haven't added that container which we used on the nav. So let's add that class container and MX auto. That way everything will be centered again. And while we're here, let's style H2 with the big text 5 XL. We can set the font size by using text class and the proper sizing. We can go LG XL 2 XL. 3XL, and well, we'll go for 5XL here. And for the H4, we'll just say text Excel. And you want to have a bit of margin as well between the elements. So a set of margin of six. All right. And this is also responsive by default. As you can see, it looks good on all screen sizes. Yeah. Next, we're going to have the two buttons, which will stay next to each other. So for that, we're going to put them inside of a wrapper, a div. And here we're going to have two buttons. Let's use the H tag. The first one will say start a project. And the next one will be an icon. I got this icon from Tabler icons, which is basically this nice arrow. Okay, so let's style the buttons. For this one, we want a BG gray of 900 text white. We want to give it some 
padding the same as we gave to these buttons and you want to make them rounded full we can also have a hover effect on them let's say whenever we hover we want the opacity to drop to 80 percent as you can see whenever we hover it just fades out a bit we can use the same classes to the other button but instead of bg gray we can say bg purple and oops look at that something weird is happening why is that well that's because they are inline elements but everything will change when we're going to change the parent to be a flex element that way the elements inside will go next to each other we can add a gap of one to add some spacing around. And instead of having different pixel values for the padding, we can say padding four on all directions, top, left, bottom, right. And that way the button will look well rounded. And the last thing we want to do here is whenever we hover on this arrow, we want to rotate it. So let me show you a trick in Tailwind CSS. We can add a class here on the SVG to rotate it 45 degrees, minus 45 degrees, like this. And whenever we hover, we want to rotate it back to zero. How we can do that? Well, we can add a class of group to the parent, because we're going to hover over the button, which is the parent of the SVG. And whenever we hover over, we want this SVG to rotate back. And we can say group hover, rotate zero so now whenever we hover over the button look at that it rotates but it rotates instantly and we don't want that we want a slight transition and for that we can just pass in the transition class and now whenever we hover look at that and that's pretty much it for this section because we don't have any elements that might not look good on mobile it also looks great there as well the only thing is, let's add some spacing around this section as well. For all the sections from now on, we're going to use these three classes. Container to give it a fixed width, MX Auto to center it horizontally, and some spacing between the sections. All right, moving on to the next one. This one will be a fun one because we have this block of text, but we want it to be pushed to the right side. So how we can do it, is by having a fixed width and pushing it to the right. The same as we push the nav here to the right, we can push the inner wrapper of the text to the right. But first let's create a section. And as I said, classes will be container, MX auto and MY12. And inside here, we're going to have a div, which will be the wrapper for our text. Let me copy the text. Okay, I copied the text, and as you can see, I also added a paragraph inside, which has a margin top of four. This way we can have a bit of a gap between these two. We could also use another H3, but for this one, I just decided to put it inside the H3 as well. And for this H3, we're going to have the classes of text to Excel. As you can see, I picked the headings here, and the classes kind of match the heading. So for example, the H2 is 5XL and the H3 is 2XL. And next, the H4 is just 1XL. So I try to keep the classes in Tailwind to sort of match the sizes from the headings. Even though Tailwind makes it so that the headings are all looking the same. It's just a convention I've been using. Okay, and now for the trick I was telling you about. On the div here, which is the wrapper of the H3, we're going to set max width to 2xl and as you can see it kind of gives it the max width obviously right because that's the class name and we can see that by applying a pg purple see it's kind of squeezed here and we can push it to the right by saying margin left auto like this and now it looks like in the design of course without the background color so let's remove that and now let's see how it looks on mobile that's not too bad. We can add some classes, like for example, see on a very big screen, it just looks like an alone text there in the right. So we can add some helper classes here. Like for example, on mobile, we can let it 
go full width like this and then shrink on MD and then maybe on LG we give it a bigger size so max width 3XL and on XL screens we give it max width 5XL so then it looks something like this see it's a tiny bit better more responsive all right perfect and the last thing we have to do here is to add a link to download the resume and for that i kind of want to reuse this because we have the same kind of hover effect right so let's put it here but we'll have to fix it a bit so we also want the text to say download resume like this and we want the icon to be next to the text so we can convert this to a flex container give it a bit of gap and actually we want the background and the text and all the rounded thingies to only be applied on the svg so we can wrap the svg into a span like this and we can move these classes to the span like this they already starting to look like we want it to we want to center them so item center let's make it font bold have the underline actually font semi bold might look better all right perfect and the icon here is a bit too big right so instead of p4 let's use p2 and even the icon size is a bit too big so instead of width and height of 24 let's use 16. and look at that already starts to look much much better but it's kind of all squeezed here so on the h3 we can go and set my6 to have some spacing there and we can use the leading class to add a line height of 36 pixels now it's nicely spaced and it also looks great on mobile and everything's perfect next up we're going to have our biggest section which will contain the work we've done so here again class container the act sorry mx auto my12 and here we can use also another heading if you remember here the h2 we use the class of text 5xl so let's keep that as well here and we're going to say the work i do awesome and underneath this one we're going to have pretty fun nav section which right now we're only going to do the presentation so only the html and css if you want to see me do a tutorial next on how to actually make this interactive with javascript let me know and we'll do it in a future video so let's create the nav which will basically have two lists first will be with the buttons from the left and next we'll have the buttons from the right with icons so let's do ul times three and a the first one will be all next one will be design and development and we can pretty much use the classes from here actually you know what let me just copy this paste it here and change the text so here will be all design development right and instead of having a border on the ul we want to have gap between the elements and this class of border and rounded fill we want them to be on all of the buttons here but the first one well the active one will have a bg ray 900 text white so it will kind of signal that it's the active one and as i said with javascript we can toggle the classes between these whenever we press them all right and we can use the same design for the next ul first we only want two buttons and the all text here will be an icon so let me arrange this a bit pasting the icons just like that but we don't want these buttons to have a bigger width than height so instead of having px6 and py4 let's just make them e4 both of them and now we want to push them to the right so what we do on the nav we're going to convert it to a flex container 
and we can apply the justify between class. This will push the elements apart as much as possible. Let's add some margin as well, 12, because, well, that's what we've been using. And now everything looks pretty good. Let's see how it works on mobile. Well, not so good. We want a mobile again to convert them to flex column. So we can say flex column and MD flex row as we did for this nav. So now mobile, they'll be on top of each other and we can give them a bit of a gap. So gap floor maybe, so they'll stay like that. And hmm, maybe for the second one, we can use ML auto to push it to the right on mobile. Yeah, kind of. Looks better now. See, it's not squished anymore here. Facto. And underneath the nav, we're going to have the section where we will basically showcase our work. We'll have five projects in this example. You can use as many projects as you want, which will have the same structure. So we'll have the wrapper, the image inside, the heading, and the small text, which will say the time it was built. Of course, you can say whatever you want about the project. So let's build the structure. We're going to have a div, which is going to be a grid container. I'll show you in a minute. But first I want to create just one card. So let's have the image. I picked the projects I've been working on and I code this. This is the music app. So I put the image with the music app here and underneath an H3, which will say music app and a small tag underneath saying built in 2023. Like that doesn't look too good. So let's add a class of X to Excel. Remember we used H3 here and H3 as well here and added the same classes to keep the structure kind of the same. Okay. And we can copy paste this four more times. So we have five elements for now. They all look the same. And we're going to work on the wrapper. Let's see, as I said, we want this to be a grid. We want to have one column on mobile. Remember, we start with mobile first. On MD plus, we're going to have grade columns two. And on LG, we want to have grade columns three. Let's also add a gap of 12 between them. All right, look at this. So on mobile, we have them all on one column. Then on two columns, they adapt the screen sizes. And then I messed up. This shouldn't be there. And then three columns. Look at that. It looks amazing. And it's responsive. This gap 12 adds 12 spacing between them. Basically 4K pixels or three RAM. If we remove this, they will be together like this. And of course we can change the images and the text here, but well, we'll do them later. And the last section on the website will be the footer, the big footer with a bunch of information inside. Now, as you remember, we used section here with the same class as container, MX and MY to center everything. But as you could see in the design, the footer has a background color that takes up the entire space, right? The entire width of the page. But at the same time, we still want to center the text inside it. So let me show you. If we add the H2 text here saying, I can help you, and we apply the same classes here, container, MX Auto, and MY12, like we had before, everything's well. This text is centered, right? Let's add a class of text 5 Excel so we can see it better. It's centered. But now if you come here and apply the BG purple 900 on it, as you can see, only this section is colored. Why? Because, well, we have the container on the footer. So how we're going to do it? Well, we're going to apply the background color on the footer, but the container and all of these classes, we're going to apply them on a section inside of the footer. So let's move the classes, add the H2 inside, and change this from purple to gray because that's how it's in the design. And look at that. The footer background color will spin across, but the text is centered. You can't see it, so let me add text right here and some padding so it looks better. And boom. Now, 
the text is aligned with the entire content, but at the same time we have the background color around it. And we can continue adding the elements inside of the section. All right, let me do the button part first because we already have these buttons. So basically we can reuse the code we wrote here. So let's go up and find it. And we can copy this div with the buttons, paste it here. Of course, we want this button to be white with a text of gray. So background white, text of gray 900. And we as well want the image. So let's take the image from here and apply it in the same div. Because we have the flex container and the gap, the image will go nicely there, but it's too big. So let's resize it to H14 and height 14 and maybe give it a bit more margin, but only between the image and the button, not between those two, because for that we have the gap. So margin right three. Awesome. And some spacing around them as well. And margin Y10. And done. See, we reused code we already wrote. We added the image and it's done. Underneath this div, we can write a small tag, which will have the text. Don't know if it's your needs or not. And inside here, we're going to have a tag. Let's have a call. It will be small like that. And we want to have some styling on the a tag. So let's have class underline. Perfect. Look at that. You can see it's a link. And whenever we click it, you can add a phone number and people can call you. All right. Now let's create this big section above. Let's go here under the heading. And we're going to have a wrapper which again, we're going to be a grid. And this will be the wrapper for each column. So let's see, we want to have the number with the border underneath, then a title, then some description, and then a list of links. Let's do that. Here, we're going to have a paragraph, which will be the number like that underneath the heading, which will be the title design underneath the paragraph. Let's just write some dummy text for now. Maybe too much, lower of 10. And underneath the UL with five links. And this is how it looks. Now let's style it. So this paragraph, we want it to be text gray 500. And we want the border bottom only and the border color to be gray 500 and a bit of padding. So we'll have this look on it. Of course, it will spend the whole section because we don't have other elements inside of this grid container. And we haven't set the columns. Next on the H3, we're going to add classes and a bit of margin. And for the paragraph, another gray text, just like that. And the list, we want some margin here as well. Make the elements a bit bigger, the text a bit bigger. And we can add spacing between these without having a flex container using the space Y3 class which will basically add margin top and margin bottom between the elements. As you can see here, it will add them, but only to the inner child, these three only, not to these two. So not the first one and not the last one, which is pretty neat. Okay, and since we have this done, we can copy and paste it two more times. This instead of design will be development. Let's remove some items and this will be Full package and let's remove four items just keep one sign plus dev of course here you can put anything you want and as you can see them are on top of each other you also need to change the numbers three and two and now if we go here to the grid and follow the same structure we used in this section with grid one on mobile grid two on md grid three on lg and of course the gap i forgot about the gap if you place them here Look at that. They're arranged nicely. And the nice thing about it is that they're also responsive, which looks pretty great. Underneath this section, we can go and add the next heading. Let me paste in the text. And here, text to Excel, add some margins like that. Actually, let's make this just a tiny bit bigger. And underneath here, we're going to say the pricing 2,999. And we want to say per month, but the per month, we want them to be bigger. So the paragraph here, we want it to be a big one, 5XL, and keep some spacing around. 
like that. And in order to make this smaller, well, we can wrap it inside of a small tag like this and give it a class of x small because it will get the class from the paragraph. So we will have to reset the small tag and it will look like this. We can bring it closer. Perfect. And we have one small tag needed, which will give more information about our services. Just like that. Look at that. Beautiful. And the last section will be the social links here, which will have the similar structure we used here, like this border thing. So we can use this paragraph, paste it in the bottom. This will say social media, like that. We want to style them a bit more. Have the text be uppercase. So it's, well, uppercase. And we want some margin top of 16 and margin bottom of four because the social links will be closer to them. All right. And the social links will be UL, LI times four and A. You already used to this. You want Twitter, LinkedIn, get Facebook, I guess. And these, we want them to be inside of a flex container and have it a gap of four. And there you go. That's it. That's our website, beautiful website, which is also pretty responsive. Look at that. Let's see on mobile. We still need to do one thing to, well, make it look a bit better on mobile. Well, actually two things, forgot about the image. We want this image to be a bit smaller on mobile. So uh, let's have it 20 by default like that. And we can say MD with 40 MD with a uh, height 40 like that on desktop. Boom. And then see how the text and everything kind of touches the margins. We can set a class of T4 on the body, give them a bit of breathing space here. But the trick with this is that, well, it kind of messes up with our footer, which takes up the full screen size, right? horizontally. And there's a bit of a hack we can do. We can, of course, add a P4 here on the footer as well. So the text inside it doesn't touch it. And we can kind of reverse the padding on the parent by giving it a negative margin of four. Kind of like, imagine like it being pulled back for M4, which is uh, 16 pixels. And this will offset the padding we gave it on the bottom. And that's it. That's our pretty beautiful personal portfolio website, which is also responsive. You can change this to use your own project. And if you're interested in a future video, we can add JavaScript to well make everything functional. We can also link these sections to the corresponding sections and whatnot. All right, so now that we finished our project, it's time to upload our code to our custom domain and have it go live online. We're going to copy the entire code here from the iCodis editor. And as you can see, I created a folder called Modern Portfolio, which has an index.html file. Let's edit this in VS Code and paste in our code. Save it and then go back to your hosting or dashboard and click on File Manager. Here you can see all the files that are on your hosting. As you can see here, please do not upload anything here in the folder, but click on Public HTML. You can delete default.php and here we can upload our index.html. We select the file and from our folder, we can select the index.html file, open it and it's done. It's uploaded to our hosting. Going back to our dashboard, we can see our website by clicking here on the link. And there you go. Now your personal portfolio website is live online and anyone can see it by going to the domain name. Congratulations on having your first website online.